Let's talk about how to actually do it. How do you actually get that sulfur dioxide out? How do you actually manage to get rid of the need for emission trading? A modern coal power plant uses a design called fluidized bed. We've got some wonderful diagrams of it you can see here, but if I just draw one through it, it's basically, we're going to have some burner, we're going to blow the air up through the bottom. And the coal is going to come in, not as big chunks like we had before, but as coal dust. We will pulverize the dust. And this dust will be suspended up here in the air because of the air rushing up. This, of course, turns into a big fireball. The ash conveniently comes out of some ash heap because this air that's blown up, the ash particles, the parts that don't burn, will gradually grow bigger as more non-burning molecules coalesce and they'll fall down. Maybe you blow it this way so they fall into the copper. And this is where the ash comes out. I think the professional drawings probably do this better service, but a fluidized bed is the modern way to burn coal. They do another thing too. Since they're pulverizing the coal first, they can make sure to take out any large objects that are in it. Large objects could be millimeter size and scale, but if you have ash particles, pieces of rock, other things that don't burn or large sulfur inclusions, Let's not even bother putting them through the plant. So, upgrading the fuel. Fluidized bed combustion. The next thing, remember there are two culprits in a power plant. Ash and the acid producing gases, SO2 and NOx. Particularly the SO2. These are what we want to get rid of. The next step in a power plant is to burn some natural gas. Actually throw some methane in here for a re-burner. What does that do for you? Well, it means that every coal power plant is really a coal combined natural gas power plant, but the energy content you get from this is small. You're not burning that much natural gas. What you're doing is making sure any of these fine dust particles that still have carbon in them get burned up. They might not have had enough uh, combustion energy, might not have sat in the combustion zone long enough, but now as they go into this natural gas fireball, they will get completely burned up and we'll get all of the carbon content out. We don't want that ash to be containing unburned carbon. That way we'll, we have less ash and more energy, more efficiency. So the gases now continue along. And as these gases continue along, they are going to have the sulfur dioxide in them. The chemical combination we want to get rid of the sulfur dioxide, this is what we're trying to do to get rid of the sulfur dioxide. This is your scrubbing reaction. Limestone, gravel, we're going to take this and we want to shift the sulfur and the carbon in trading places. We want to end up making calcium sulfate. All right, we need a little more oxygen comes out in this process as well. Uh, looks like we need uh, another oxygen atom here. All right, but the key is we want to take this sulfur from the sulfur dioxide and turn it into a solid product, a very inert product, gypsum, as calcium sulfate. The next step in a coal power plant is to actually do this reaction on the fly. You inject into the flue some calcium carbonate, sorbent injection, something that will absorb the sulfur right there and take it out as a powder right away. It's hot enough for that reaction to occur and we can just get rid of a good portion of the sulfur by sorbent injection. The next step is the electrostatic precipitator. We've had these around for a long time. We've talked about them already. They are the long metal sheets that have a charge on them. The dust, the fly ash, is attracted to them because it's electrically charged. You then 
dump it off into the ash bin when it builds up a thick enough layer. The next step in a modern coal power plant is called a pre-scrubber. It's a simple device. You take all of the exhaust gas and you bubble it through water. Anything that will dissolve in the water comes out. This is typically where you get all of your heavy metals out. Finally, we still have this combination of sulfur dioxide, water vapor, and carbon dioxide, and we put it through a scrubber. This is another big water tank that has a limestone slurry in it. And when you bubble this through, you convert the sulfur dioxide to the calcium carbonate, which precipitates out as a solid and can be drained off the bottom. This process gets rid of 95 to 99 percent of the sulfur dioxide in the process, gets you below that EPA limit, and makes it so that you earn credits which now you can't sell to anybody because everyone else has done something similar as well. Society benefits, we put less sulfur dioxide into the air. The acid content of the rain across the northeastern United States has come up, meaning it's turned back into more normal rain instead of acid rain that it was for many years. Modern technology, smart economic regulation and policy, and understanding the science of what's going on is able the acid rain problem to be largely eliminated, at least in the United States. That's what you need to know about dropping acid.